I want to continue the conversation around man woman relating the reclamation of Eros and the organization of our inner and outer energies into the complementarity that is available through conscious polarity. And I specifically want to talk about my new favorite show, Outlander. <laughs> so my former self is laughing at my current self because if you listen to my introduction, you'll know that I have been many, many different people in this lifetime. And I continue <laughs> to embody many different energies. I mean, literally the other day I woke up, I danced. So I was wearing a pole outfit, right? Also known as some version of a high cut bikini. And then I was all sweaty and I go outside and I decided it's time to clean my chicken coop. So I clean my chicken coop and then I am almost late for a meeting on lawful emancipation and trust management. And later I have an interview discussing antidepressants. And then I'm meeting with colleagues to talk about whether or not cells actually exist in the ways that we were told they do. So I'm all kinds of circus up in here. And I was somebody who absolutely judged those who watch TV for many, many years of my activism, probably like six years of my activism career. And in my relationship, we did not watch TV. So recently I had a number of Scottish synchronicities, people who came into my life and probably six or seven different examples of some sort of awareness of Scotland that I hadn't had before. My girlfriends had watched Outlander many years ago and encouraged me to watch it. And I rolled that. There's no way I was going to spend my time watching some romantic time traveling show. And of course, now was the time. So I want to share with you some of what I have learned from Outlander, which is a lot. As any good programming does, there are many nuggets of sacred truth rolled up into a burrito of enculturated and conditioned deception. So that is my caveat because the rest of what I am about to share has impacted me actually quite deeply. I will start with a quote from Jamie in the show. And he says, a man's life springs from his woman's bones and in her blood is his honor christened. So if you heard my past couple of episodes, you know that I am a believer that through the sacred dynamics of man, woman relating, there is an extraordinarily exquisite experience of our true divine nature that becomes available in the space between. So I observed that there were many, many aspects of the dynamic between Jamie and his beloved Claire that helped me to experience and feel what this kind of polarity can be like, because absent knowing what is possible, whether through fantasy fiction or through those in our community, it's hard to know what to want, because if you don't know that it's actually possible, how could you know to want it? So there were a couple of things I want to touch on that I noticed, because there is a clear agenda in this program <laughs> to foreground a certain kind of polarized dynamic between a man and a woman. And there is a reason for the popularity of the show, which is how it feels. I can only speak as a woman, but how it feels as a woman to watch this couple and specifically how it feels to, at least for me, to witness his gaze. That kind of masculine attention, that gaze what that feels like, even as a voyeur, is extraordinary. It's very, very powerful. And that gaze becomes available because of a lot of the elements of submission that are offered by his partner, right? So there is an implicit message throughout the show that if you are a woman in dynamic with a man, you better listen to him or you're going to die. <laughs> there are many examples where Claire literally almost dies 
or is put in great peril by her own choices and actions in defiance of Jamie. So one of the ways in which we heal the father wound on the outside is to choose somebody who has some of the aspects of our first relationship with a man, our father, which has some imago elements, which in Claire's case, she has an opportunity to be with a man who she trusts enough to be guided by. And obviously she has this mercenary impulse that says like, I know better what needs to happen than he does. And I'm going to do the damn thing I think should happen. However, the messaging in the show is that every time she does that, every time she doesn't listen to him, doesn't allow him to guide, doesn't allow him to protect her, doesn't allow him to lead, bad things happen. Through a conventionally feminist lens, you could say, well, that's very subversive for that message to be in there. And women do know best what they need and what they should do. They should always listen to that and always trust that. And yes, I understand that. And I am a great champion for women aligning with their intuition and trusting nothing more than that. However, in dynamic, when you have chosen a man that you trust fundamentally, who offers you containment, who knows how to create conditions of safety for you and your nervous system, then it is potentially your role to actually listen, to actually assume that relationship to his inner guidance system, decision-making and his impulse to protect and listen. I mean, it's painful to watch her be in this sort of defiant adolescent dynamic with him and not listen and then get herself into all sorts of trouble. I thought that was super interesting. She is in a position to allow him to also put her in her place. So allow him to see better than she can see herself what's going on with her and to adjust her, correct her. There is progress that must be made in ending the war with men to relate to a man in such a way. And again, this is in a certain context of an emotionally compatible needs meeting dynamic with a man that you trust, right? Because otherwise doing that is buying eggs from the hardware store and attempting to secure love, approval, and connection from the impossible place, also known as a toxic codependent dynamic. So we are assuming that you're in a dynamic with a chosen man who offers you the structure of connection that you want in your romantic dynamic. So how do you organize yourself or allow yourself to be organized by him? I think in many ways through her foibles and missteps, she shows us what it looks like when she allows him to put her in her place, when she allows him to guide and lead her. Yeah. I know that many of you can relate to what I'm saying. When you are in the presence of a man who has that kind of discernment, that strong a spine and whose judgment you trust, you want to feel that containment. You want to know he's watching. He's attuned enough to recognize when it is that you to go this way versus that way. He asks her at some point, do you trust me? And all, everyone watching can feel, of course she does. And she offers him that, right? This idea of the currency of trust real trust coming from a woman to a man and specifically that she trusts him with her heart, which means that she trusts him to caretake her emotional dimension, to attune and invest in it in the way that for many of us did not happen with our father figures and what an extraordinary gift that is in partnership.